Well, hello, I'm Sue Bola, and please call me Sue. I would be very happy to answer your questions. What are four key elements of PR? A public relations person helps a client get exposure for a product or to make the company more famous. So, for instance, if I work for Apple, the computer company, I would be working on getting media coverage, getting their new uh, BR glass um, into the newspaper so that people would buy that that uh, VR tool rather than one from Magic Leap or Oculus. So the job of public relations is to get media coverage for a product that a client is trying to sell. Yeah. Good morning. I see you. You're How wearing, are you, ma'am? You're wearing earrings. It's not. How oh. are you, ma'am? I'm very good. Thank you. How would you describe your teaching style? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, I am a very tough teacher. <laughs> I make my students work very hard because I want them to learn. I care very much that they do learn the subjects that I have been teaching. And so I have them repeat their work and I grade their work. I make marks on it. And then I have them do it again. And I would say, I'm, like I said, a very strong and tough teacher, but very fair and, and also I'm trying always to help them learn. So I have, I'm sort of like a big brother, big sister when I teach. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, it is very early here. How are you, ma'am? I'm very good today. I'm going to wake up and take a walk on the beach. Could you please tell us about the importance of games in education and training? Okay. When I was working in public relations and I'm now retired, um, I had a lot of clients who made entertainment games, video games. Do you all play video games? Raise your hand if you play video games. I would work until about 6.30 at night, and then I would go home to eat dinner with my family. And some of my students would stay in the office and play video games on the computer in the conference room because they could display the game in a big form and they could have fun doing the, the uh, missions of the video game. And I began to say, why is it that kids love games so much that they will stay till midnight and play instead of going home? And then one day, a man called me and he said, I would like you to promote my video, my game. And I said, all right, tell me about your game. And he said, my game teaches children mathematics. And I said to myself, oh my goodness, what a good use for a game to help kids learn mathematics or math as we say here. So I helped him. And from there I helped more companies that were making games to help kids learn history, learn English, learn math. And I realized, and now research has shown that if you make learning fun, if you have games in what you teach, then students become more interested in listening and learning and remembering. So now there is a big trend for teachers to employ some sort of game in all of the subjects. And I even started a conference that happens once a year where teachers and others can learn how to make games for training and for learning. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, you're welcome. My question is, you taught many subjects. Which is your favorite subject and why? 
So my favorite is journalism, which means that I was a reporter for newspapers and magazines, and I wrote stories for them before I, and after I became a teacher. So my favorite subject is journalism because I think writing, being able to write is essential to so many businesses. If you write well, it will help you in almost any job that you would hold. Thank you. Okay, thank You're you. Welcome. Uh, Roshni, would you like to ask the question? Yes, sir. Please. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How I see are you, ma'am? I'm good. I see the flowers behind you on the... Hello, ma'am. I'm Roshni, an eighth grader from the school, Ayla Varam. Here, my question is, important decision that you made in your life? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The most important decision. Well, I think, actually, the important decision I made was to move to a big city. I was living in a very small town in Minnesota, and it also was very cold there much of the year. And I moved to California, which was a very big state, and I moved to Los Angeles, and I was warmer. <laughs> and I also liked living in a city. I liked living where there was more opportunity for women to have jobs. So I think moving to the city after I got my college education was the most important decision I made. Wow. Good morning. How are you, ma'am? I'm good, thank you. I'm just waking up. <laughs> this is Radhika, I'm sixth grader. I'm from GBHS Ailavaram. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Yes, please do. Could you please tell us about life in California? Well, let's see. Um, California is a very big state and we have 10% of the population of the whole country. So we have a number of big cities. I live in Los Angeles, which is in the south of the, of the state. And it is a very city that is spread out like this. Most of the big cities have many high rises. Los Angeles had a lot of problem with earthquakes. You all know what an earthquake is, you know, when it rumbles and shakes and causes buildings to fall down. So when Los Angeles was built, they spread it out over a great, large bit of land. So we do have high rises, but there are several little places around Los Angeles. There is not one big central city. It is very warm here most of the year. And I live near the beach, so I have the benefit of cool winds coming much of the year, and I have the benefit of walking near the beach. But I can get in my car, and I can drive anywhere. And we do not have good mass transportation. We do not have a subway that goes all over the city. So almost everyone that has a job that is not adjacent, not right next door to where they live, must own a car. So we also have problems with pollution because we have so many cars and all of the smog from the cars. So sometimes it takes a while for that layer of smog to burn off. So we see the beautiful sky, but being near the ocean helps. It brings air into the city and blows away the clouds. And we are working hard to become a city that has less pollution. It is a city that has many universities. I think we have Los Angeles. I'm, I've narrowed your question just to the Southern part of the state. I hope that's okay. But we have probably 40 schools, university schools that you would go to after high school. So there is an opportunity for almost everyone here to learn. But sometimes kids go away. My own children, 
one of them went to Chicago to go to college. The other one did stay here because they have a very good volleyball team where she went to college and she wanted to play volleyball while she was in school too. But then they both traveled around and came back to Los Angeles. So I'm lucky that my children are not living near me here. But I've definitely decided I don't ever want to go back and live in such a cold country as Minnesota. Uh, Sue, I have also heard that Los Angeles is a hub for filmmaking. Hollywood industry is located in uh, Los Angeles. I heard that many pictures are being made in that part uh, that in that particular part of USA. So a great deal. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Much of the Hollywood industry is here. Mm -hmm. So what was your question? Did you have a question about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you, you ever have you ever encountered with any Hollywood actors uh, in your region? <laughs> Since it is a hub for the Hollywood industry. Well, I've met some of the movie stars um, mm -hmm. because Kodak Eastman Kodak, when they were a big company, used to hire Burt Backrack. Um, wait a minute, I think I've got the musician, not the movie star. Um, he, they used to hire um, movie stars to represent Kodak. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I've been to uh, what is now called the Microsoft Theater, which used to be the Kodak Theater, which is where they have the Oscars and they honor all of the top movies. Um, but I have not done a great deal in Hollywood because I preferred to work in technology. Okay. Most of the products that I represented as public relations were PCs, accessories for PCs, big mm -hmm. servers, and other things that have to do with the computer industry or video games. Okay. So I didn't work in Hollywood. Okay, thank you. Uh, students, uh, do, we have uh, missed a few students, uh, and uh, in fact, they are they are supposed to ask those questions. On behalf of my students, I would like to ask this question. So, what are the important qualities that uh, a twenty first century English teacher should have? Well, he should spend a lot of time talking, <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's more important to talk. English to speak English than to write it or read it. And that's the best way to make your accent seem real to the country. I speak a little Spanish. And the only reason I speak Spanish is because I had someone live with us who was taking care of my children when I was working. And she did not speak any English. So when I talked to her, I was forced to learn the Spanish. And I found after a while that no one cares if you make a mistake. No one of another language thinks less of you. They don't care. As long as you are making the effort to try to speak the language, they will listen to you and they will help you. And you will learn best from actually having to talk to someone in English. Yeah, what do most of the Americans, Americans after the completion of their schooling, after the completion of their graduation or post-graduation, what do they want to become, most of the Americans? In India, most of the Indians want to become a software technicians because they want to export the software to other countries and they make a lot of money. And they want to fancy their chances by immigrating the developed countries like Australia, uh, Britain and America and some other countries. So how about there in America? It's not that different, um, but for different reasons. Most Americans, I would say the most popular job is something in computers and mm -hmm. uh, software engineering or but also programmers, almost anything in engineering or virtual reality. Um, because that's where a lot of the money is. Of course, we still have people that want to be movie stars. <laughs> but the, the job that are really well paid have something technical about them. You know, everything is changing so fast. I have to tell you, I went to the movie theater the other day 
to see a movie. And I had a lot of trouble because one of the things I had to do was buy tickets with a, a rolling ball to figure it out. And then I went inside and it was a touch screen. And the movie itself was 3D. So everything about even going to the movie theater had to do with technology. And my grandchildren then went with me, had no problem at all, but I am having to learn. And so they are helping me already. Um, <laughs> but I think every day, you know, there are changes to the cell phone. There are changes to the computer. Technology is here for the future. And yes, I think we do use a lot of technology from overseas. I had, I applied, I put out an advertisement for someone who could help me with the computer sometimes. And several people applied from India. But you know, the problem was their accents were very thick. So yes. if you want to work in, in technology, you must work on your English. Yeah, absolutely. I do agree with you. Many Indians are immigrating to America and just to seek their opportunities. Uh, how about my Indians, uh, my, my students' accent, including me? Well, um, it's there is a distinctive accent um, <laughs> from India. <laughs> but each time, as I said, if you speak with someone, you yeah. know, that speaks English, you can improve it. My father suggested I become a teacher. Some of you asked and talked about the fact that I had many jobs. And yeah. the reason I had many jobs was because when I was your age, my father suggested I become a teacher because then I could have children. I could re go away from the job and have children and then someday go back as my mother did. So I went through college and I became a teacher and I taught ninth grade English and journalism in a high school in Colorado. But after three years, I decided that I was doing the same thing every year and that I wanted to learn more and have a job that would require me to grow and to learn more about things in life. So I went back to college for two years and I got my master's degree in journalism. And then I went to California, which was a very important move. And I got a job in public relations because they needed someone who could write, who could represent clients and their products. And I then was in public relations for 50 years. But all during that time, I kept learning more and having more responsibility. And I had children and I never quit. I just kept working when I was, when they were very young, when I were just born, I worked for my house and my company has allowed me to keep working. So within three months, in the case of my second child, three weeks, I was back at work because it was very important for me. And I did not want to learn. I did not want to lose the progress that I was making. So I just kept working. And I have two children now who are grown and have children of their own. And all four of the children, my children and their spouses, are working in technology. They're working in some form of computers. They're making, one of them is actually making an Oculus-like product uh, at their company, a company called Magic Leaf. Okay. Another one is working in marketing. That's the two women. Then the two men, one of them is working in biotech um, startup companies. And my son is working in real estate, but he still needs a great deal of computer, computer knowledge because all of the math and planning and finance is done with Excel spreadsheets and business software. So yes. they're all using technology in their work, but they're okay. doing something that makes them happy. Yeah. So here is another question, and who inspired you to become a teacher? Uh, if you take my thing, my life experience, uh, when I failed in English subject, when I was uh, uh, studying grade 10, uh, I left the school with a faded face, and I had to join uh, one tutorial where uh, an English teacher taught me a few lessons. 
so exactly the place where i developed my passion towards english so when i was taught by my school teacher in regular school days i didn't like english but the same subject when somebody taught me i developed a passion it's all about the inspiration the way that he taught to me english today i am here because of him so yeah. how about you who inspired you to become a teacher well i should start from the beginning my grandparents emigrated from europe they were farmers and they had no money but they found the money to put all of their nine children through college so from the beginning my mother was the ninth child and when she married my father and they had children they talked to them about the importance of education they my mother and father were teachers um my mother taught science and my father taught physical ed but he also was the athletic director of the school system and he started many programs to help children learn how to play sports because of the importance of of what you can learn in sports yeah uh, for your future and they put all three of my the children in my family through college and for the first time two of us got masters degrees so i then was the woman the only girl in the family and my father as i told you just thought i could just become a teacher but i was interested in my profession the subject which was journalism so i was the sport i was the editor of the newspaper in high school and i loved doing that and i had to take a big test to get into college and the test said that technology i was much better at math than i was in english but i wanted english like you so i mean i wanted uh, writing so i went got my degree and i started teaching journalism um i went to the journalism school instead of the computer science because i wanted to write i wanted to be a journalist and it all worked out um along the way i developed more and more skill in writing and then i began to use it to help people to help them get publicity for their products in the newspaper so i think you need to decide what you like and then go do it and then if you define that you want more then go and improve on your education and do something else that makes you happy possible to take your laptop outside your home and to show us your outside weather on the minium and uh i actually whoops what happened yes the back yeah we can hear you okay so um i am on what is called a loft um okay. it is a partial second floor mhm mm and you can see here my computer stand yes and you can see this this is kind of interesting this is a what i have brought back from the trips that mm -hmm. i have taken around the world because oh. i've been lucky to travel so i have brought back artifacts from different countries wow that remind me of my life mm -hmm. yes let's see if i can get the door open here yeah, please and if you happen to visit india please uh, in, remind me at least a few days before so that uh, if it is possible i can invite you to my school as well well thank you this is a porch okay outside of my bedroom mhm mm so you are looking at the beach oh you can see that you can yeah, see I the beach it, it, must, it must be a pacific coast i think am i right Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. Pacific yeah. Ocean. So yeah. there is the beach. Yeah. And uh, we have a little seating area around mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Because we Very hope to use it. And mm -hmm. all right. So, let's see what I could do quickly. Yeah. This is the this is the living room. Oh. Mm. I am above it, right? <laughs> no. in the living room it's so cozy like a better 
Of course, we have a television. Mm -hmm. I can't always see. Do you see that? Have we lost it? Yes, yes. Oh, no. Yes. Looking at the ceiling. <laughs> I'm not used to carrying my... Yeah, yeah, we could see, right? Wow. Yeah, the fireplace is also there. It's it, it's very surprising and very unique to see the fireplace in India because India is a warm country. <laughs> oh, it's crazy to have a fireplace in California. It's just a status. We don't use it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I can get downstairs. Thank you so I'm much. In the bedroom because my husband is still asleep. No problem. No problem. Thank you so much for giving us a virtual tour of your home. And especially if we are able to take a look at the Pospi portion. Thank you so much. Uh, so welcome. would like would like to give you a final message to my students. One minute time is there. Well, I think work hard because it will pay off. It will be important yes. that you work hard in school and learn as much as you can. And uh, Someday, maybe you, maybe you will even visit California. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Ah, it's our pleasure.